the network. Oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another link up. Today, I am linking up with Rocco Rathon. He is another, another digital marketer, and the guy's done a lot, man. So we're going to get his perspective. You're going to hear about a lot of the things he's done, the people he's worked with, some of the things he can talk about, some he can't, but even uh, we're going to even touch on why he can't talk about certain things because it's going to give you guys a lot of perspective of how this game really does work. And, you know, they want to keep it current. Talk about some of the things going on with marketing today. So, Rocco, what's up, man? Appreciate you getting on. What's going on, bro? What's going on? It's been a long time coming, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure, man. Definitely, you know, been seeing you for a good minute. You know, we didn't hit, hit each other up for the first time a good minute ago. But, you know, some things, you know, they come together at a long speed. Everybody's working. I'm glad to be able to really, you know, get deeper into the combos and, like, I, I still don't fully know you. You know, how'd you get your, your game started? I know you mentioned that you you started off in traditional marketing. Um, so, like, w did you, were you in even in the music industry at all? Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to school for marketing. And then my last year, I had an internship with uh, Selena Johnson's manager, a singer from Chicago. Okay. Right? So I had a marketing internship with, with her. So, you know, I was helping her on her chapter, uh, chapter five underrated album. I was the marketing intern for that, for that album release. So that's when I, when I say traditional marketing at that time, it was 2011. So the whole digital marketing thing wasn't really like, it wasn't really popped off yet at that time. Mm, okay. So to really <laughs> paint a picture, especially for people who won't have no idea, like what, what did traditional marketing look like? What did your day to day look like at that time? At that time, it was pretty much just putting together, helping to put it, put together the rollout, but it's more so grassroots. It's more so like contacting media outlets, mm. like, you know, for TV, for yeah. radio, for magazines, um, and, you know, helping to put together uh, tours and pop-ups and, and events and interviews, things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, um, you know, more institutional, institution, corporations like that. Yeah, you know, like, like the traditional gatekeeper. Way yes. yes. Yeah, very, very B2B in politics versus straight to consumer, basically. Mm -hmm. Got you. So from, from there, what, what was it about that internship that made you keep going and say you wanted to do it in music? I mean... Keep it a buck. Like, I always wanted to work in music. That wasn't even a question. That was something I knew I wanted to do since I was a little kid when I saw Puffs behind the music. Oh, when man. I, when, you can, <laughs> when I found out you can work in music without being a musician, I knew that that's, that's where my career path was going to go. Like, it's never been a question. Dang. So it was like, oh, it's a wrap now. <laughs> and, and it was crazy. It's like I had, like, a street team internship with Interscope, like, like my freshman year of college. And then I just fell off with the whole music thing altogether. Word? And what was that? At that time, like, and I'm sure my age, I'm 32. Um, at that time, it was like Shop Boys, Party Like a rock star. Yeah. It was like uh, So Crispy, Kia Shine. It was like very microwavable, disposable rap music out at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wasn't feeling it. You know what I mean? And yeah. then, like, I got into, like... I got more involved with college with partying and living the college life. And I just kind of just left it alone. And then that internship just, you know, when you let it go, it comes back to you. It just showed right back up. So I just followed with that. That's what's up. So from the Selena Johnson internship, where if we go down your path, where do we get to a point where you're like, okay, I feel like I'm actually making an impact on an artist a marketing campaign you might not necessarily be the sole impact but where you're like okay this campaign is really going and i see what this game really looks like um it was a it was when um i linked up with this artist producer named velas um some people may or may not be familiar with him he actually just grammy nominated again he produced no guidance chris brown and drake right but back then i was one of the people who discovered him um, he's from upstate New York. He lives like about an hour north of me. 
Oh. And um, we basically ground up, bro. We came up together. Like I'm talking about like sharing sandwiches, no money, but trying to break into the music business. And because he like wrote and produced everything on his own, there were certain things we didn't need to pay for. You know what I mean? We didn't need yeah. to pay for production. We didn't need to do all these things. Yeah. So a lot of it fell on me trying to like put plays together to get things going for him, right? And what was more important than that, there was a lot of trial and error. A lot of things went wrong. You know what I mean? Learned as well as we went. Um, Cause that was around that same time when the blogs were really starting to pop up. Like the blogs were becoming relevant and breaking an artist, right? So yeah. I just decided, I was like, these traditional ways that I just learned, I'm like, this is not really right now. It's, it's dying. And it's already hard to break in with an artist who's brand new. Forget mm. how talented he is. He's just he's new. Yeah. So I was like, let me start working in media to facilitate helping him. Because if I could make those relationships on the blog end, yeah. I could help. That's, that was my logic behind it. Yeah, infiltrate. <laughs> exactly right but like i'm already like uh like that was that's one of my talents like i'm just a great writer so right. when i went into the media and it just took off that's from me going from blogging for funk flex and um, dj enough to going to the source to being editor at the source and all this time i'm like my network and the people i'm meeting i'm helping pull velas up mm. and then at the same time other people are seeing what I'm doing with Bellas and then they're reaching out to me like, yo, can you do the same thing for me? And that's how like my personal business started to grow. Dope. Dope. So you never wanted to be like a manager or anything in particular? Um, yeah, when I came into the growing up and when I came in, yeah, that, that's something that I always thought about, but managing, I realized is just not, and I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm saying things that are kind of too real and too harsh, Nah, bro, that's, that's, how, that's how we need it. It's my truth, but, like, I feel like management in this game is, like, um, it's one of the worst jobs you can have in the music business. A lot of people who are thirsty to be management, it's just kind of like you, you might be playing yourself. Mm. Why, why is that? Explain. Because a manager essentially has no security. You can be fired. You can be let go at any point. Mm -hmm. So if you come in the game with an artist that you're managing and you're putting together your resources, your time, your energy to help them get to point A to point B. Like the way this game works, a lot of the people who are at the top of management, the reason why they're there is because once the new artist, the new fresh new artist shows up on the block, Mr. Big Time Manager that everybody knows is gonna show up in his Porsche and like yeah. put his arm around your artist and be like, Thanks for coming out. I'll take it yeah. from here. <laughs> and, 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 you're, and you're gone, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Where, and, and it's a hard job because it's just kind of like, it's kind of really just like adult babysitting for real. You know what I mean? And it's a thankless job. For sure. So it's a thankless job, it's a tough job, and there's no security. So why? So that's not a rock that, when, is, that's not even something that happened to me. That's something that I've seen happen to so many people. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I would never do that. Yeah. Nah, I mean, I, I think that's a pretty fair analysis in a lot of ways in so many s situations. It's definitely not, I mean, then you always have to, not only are you babysitting in, in, a, in many instances, not all artists, but a large majority, I mean, a lot of cases, you, uh, you're also basically putting your life on this person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that, you got to only encourage them, but you, if they are, lazy or they are whatever whatever the issues are that means that's money that's not going in you so it just creates a whole weird dynamic of course there are some great manager artists and situations out there but i definitely i definitely agree it's definitely a, a tough job and it's not for everybody including me <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, i'm with you i'm with you so when you knew you weren't gonna be a manager were you um I mean, because you, and that's why I asked, because you were working with Velas. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe you might say, hey, I'm, I'm going to become a manager. Especially if he, he was, you know, is he an artist artist? Like, was he trying to be friend artist or was he just trying to be back in songwriter? He, he was, he was um, signed to a production company that I was working with at the time, right? And 
so it wasn't a manager situation. It was just, he was signed to a production company. And um, the goal at that time was to build him up to get to a label situation. Mm. You know what I mean? And then actually, um, we ended up meeting up with Vinyls. Vinyls is one of um, OVO, OVO's top producers. A lot, of, a lot of records that you've seen Vellis have production on, co-production is with Vinyls, of course. So when we met Vinyls, we met a lot of people along the way. And this is from like going to events, going down to SOBs, to uh, Santos, to Irving Plaza, to all these places, just going to events, just networking, meeting people like, yo. And, um, <clears throat> and, and I'm kind of veering off right now, but I'm just remembering this thing, this gem that I just learned in that journey is, when you're trying to come up as an artist, stop trying to um, appeal to the people that are already on. Like if you're an artist or like, yo, you see this artist that came to perform here, you're trying to get backstage to link with him and his management. Don't do that. Like network and work with the people that are on your level. Cause y'all are the next generation. Y'all are gonna come up together. Mm -hmm. you know, work laterally. Like you guys can help each other. So that a lot of that was going on. There's a lot of there's artists that you know Bellis did production for, right? and in exchange for like uh, verses and connections, and there was a lot of bartering going on in those days. You know what I mean? But I kind of veered off the question, so I forgot. You said, um, was he was he signed, right? Well, yeah, I was asking what what was the aspiration essentially? Was he looking to be a a writer? producer type or was he also somebody who wanted to be an artist you know and be, and, and be that guy an artist an artist um you definitely looking to be an artist but you know when you're coming up you have to use everything at your disposal to try to get on so if you're a producer songwriter and that's what's going to get you in the door that's what's going to get you in the door you know what i mean and once mm -hmm. you're in the door it's up to you to maneuver from there 100 percent. so for you then i mean you came you came in traditional marketing. You started doing this this stuff as far as writing, building those relationships. Were you were you pretty much content with that bag, and you just stayed running running that, or did you, or did you ever say you wanted to do, or did you just or did you just kind of do that in the meantime while you were trying to figure something else? Because you low key kind of fell into that. You you were trying to help Velas, and now yeah. this thing is popping off. Like what, what what was your mindset at that time? I'm just trying to get an idea of how you navigate through the game because I think. That you know, hearing how other people have navigated, it can help us move forward. You know what I mean? At that time, if I was comfortable with that bag, there was no bag at that time. Ah, uh, like for 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 like the first few years, literally like no money, like zero dollars, and like I mean like working nonstop but making no money, right? And I didn't have like it's not I didn't have a day job at the time because in my mind, this is how naive I was. I felt like I met an artist so talented that, oh, we're going to make it soon. I don't need to go get a job. I yeah. had got laid off. I was working um, at this firm um, in one of the top firms, actually, like as an office assistant in, in Westchester. And I got laid off. And I'm like, I'm not even looking for a new job. We're going to be on by the end of the year, straight. And then that didn't happen. And what a lot of people don't know is a lot of these bloggers and writers and people that work in media, they don't make much money if they make any money at all. Right. Okay. Not, and that was a reality that I had to learn immediately. So when people were coming to me, like, um, can you do for me what you do, what I see you doing for Bellis? I kind of had to do that to, just to make money. You know what I mean? Got you. Got you. Okay. So when you, what is a what let's stop right there like the writers and all them people you said a lot of them don't, don't make money why is that like what's the situation really look like for for most writers um most writers like they might make like and let, let me not front on um hot 97 because i did get paid there okay <laughs> like, not right away and it wasn't much it was very little it was very little right. but it was something because some places don't give you nothing right got you um it, it's pretty like like it, it's shocking how how many writers don't make any money at all it's it's shocking like if people knew like a lot of people like let's say you and i heard um scotty bean from hot 97 say this she was just like yo um 
people working at Target or Walmart be coming up to her like, oh, you work at Hot 97, da, da, da. and she's like, yo, you don't even know, like, you make more money than me. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the reality. Yeah, yeah. So what's the, what's, I mean, what's the hustle that people look to navigate, right? If I'm gonna be a writer, what is, what is, what am I looking towards to make real money? Am I going, because uh, if I'm coming in the game that way, am I going to look to finesse it into bro, like, my own publication? Yeah. Like, what am I finessing to? Bro, like, that's why a lot of these writers are angry. That's why. Straight up. Like, there is no, there is no um, grand plan because it's like, you work here, you work here, and you're not making much money either place you're working, right? Yeah. And like for me, for me, I was just like, hell nah, <laughs> hell no, no way. Like yeah. I, I have some. So that's when the idea of the rap fest came about. And the rap fest, I literally like sat in like my bedroom at the time. I was living in my mom's crib, rent free, of course, because that was a saving grace. Yeah, you know what I mean, and I was sitting in my bedroom. And like, I remember being on WordPress, just, just putting everything together, built the website, built the staff. Um, and that, the goal in that was to um, have my own publication. And I remember thinking to myself like, yo, I'm gonna launch this, it's gonna be lit, and I'm gonna pay everybody. Mm. And I'm gonna have all the best writers come work for me because I'm gonna pay everybody, whatever. <laughs> but but that's, that's another story because it's just kind of like the, 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 the partner, that I had at the time, um, well, one of them, I was partners with him on Rap Fest and with the Bella situation. And then we all ended up um, parting ways with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was, that was um, I, it was rough for me to do because it's like you build something from scratch and you want to become this thing that everybody in the industry knows about. And, but you have to walk away from it because the shit ain't right. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you just, that's why I said in my life, like I started over from scratch more than once. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, so like when it comes to like people writing, I always used to like try to like get people talk to writers and be like, yo, let's, we can do this. We can do that. Let's come together and do our own like thing. And like, really like we all have it, but let's, let's form our own thing and this, this, that. But I realized quickly that, a lot of people, they just want to write, but they're not business minded, right? And they don't want to, they're not eager to own anything. They just right. want to just get a check no matter how little it is. So I was just like, okay, I'm good. And, you know, that, that, that's that. <laughs> Got you. Okay, cool. Well, Man, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not gonna go all deep into that direction because just that whole writing thing is 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 something in and of itself. But shifting back dying over, you said what? It's a dying art form too. People don't read me. That look that too. People, you, you can you write whatever. It's better to just create videos. Like that's why YouTube is so popping. <laughs> that's why, like, that's why we here on YouTube. You know what I mean? That's that's why it is. So. When you switched over, well, I mean, your next move into marketing, right? Uh, like, tell me, like, at, like after Bellas, like you worked with so many artists and, and situations. You you had certain things pop off. Bring up, tell me what, about one of the situations and what you learned, like one of your successes. You know what I mean? And then we might get into like a more failure type situation. But kind of what what did you learn from it and some of the nuances, giving people an idea of the back end and what that really looks like from a marketing standpoint, if you can go that deep, you know, I know, you know, you can only talk um, about so much in some of these situations. I guess, I guess the biggest success, I guess you can say for me is, is Vellis. Cause I was working with him um, from the very beginning, from like 2012, all the way up to like 2017, right? And we're still cool, we're still very cool. Yeah. And the, the thing with that is, um, I was working with him from when traditional marketing was still prevalent all mm -hmm. the way to digital marketing is like the number one. Um, mm. That's why. And yeah. um, like watching how media changed in terms of like, think about it like this. So in 2012, within a few months of working with him, we had his music video on, on uh, at the time it was MTV jams. It wasn't even BET jams. 
<laughs> yeah. Dang. It was before the brand switch. Yeah, and like, was big back then. It, it was huge for us. But then we realized, like, you know, and this is a lesson learned for a lot of these artists that want to get their video um, up on TV. It's like, yo, that video was up there for a weekend, right? And it got uh, played a handful of times. And then after that, it was over. <laughs> so it's kind of like in the moment. Yeah. But after that, it's just kind of like, what's next? And then yeah. uh, it, became, it became the, the learning experience there was a lot of times artists come into the game thinking that they're going to meet one person or they're going to land on this one platform. And then the moment that they land on this platform, it's all going to change after that and they're lit. No, that's just a look. That's just part of what it's, it's going to help what you're trying to do, but right. no one thing is going to be what takes you over the top. Oh, I just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, you got to keep that junk going, man. You can take, take pictures with people and all that kind of stuff. And then you leave and then, you know, oh man, that was a nice part event and weekend, but yeah. you're, it's still the same bed. <laughs> and, and, and like, and like I, I saw how, how things changed. Cause I remember when, uh, cause through my barber, through my barber, uh, Jared Oates, um, he's like a celebrity barber, but he's a kid I grew up with. Right. Mm -hmm. He used to cut a French Montana's manager's hair. Okay. So I used to bring Bella to the shop. And then from that was the connection with French's manager at the time and us. So then French wanted to sign Bella's. So then Bella's gives him a batch of beats. And then one of those beats ends up in the hands of Kanye West. And that song is called All Day. Right? Dope. And that was the first big placement. Right. And then at Dude. that time, at that time, that's when I started like really learning um, like the cutthroat legalities of the music business at a high level, like in terms <laughs> of like, you know, paperwork and mm. things like that. And just seeing like and, and it's just kind of like being new to all of this. Yeah. And kind of like having so many questions, but kind of not being able to ask questions because you don't want to like show your hand. You know what I mean? And then at the same time, when All Day did drop, like the, the moment Kanye performed that, bro, all these connections that I had made over the years, some of these people already knew I was working with Ella, some of them were already aware of them, bro, I hit up everybody mm. for press. And because All Day, everyone was talking about it so crazy at the time. And this is like, shows you, um, and I'm going to, this is um, an example for a larger that I'm going to make. But like, at, because All Day was so hot and Vellis was the co-producer of it, everybody picked up my phone. Everybody answered my email. It yeah. was like that. Yeah. Like, I got them on MTV News. I got them on this. I got them on that. I got them on this. I got them. And, that, and then that lesson, the lesson I want people to get from that is when you're trying to hire someone to represent you, or someone to um, do PR for you, or any type of marketing to help you get ahead, what you have to look at is not the big name people that they've worked with. You have to look like, cause you could like, like um, I remember I, I did uh, like, um, I was uh, the associate producer for a Nipsey Hussle documentary, right? Mm -hmm. That sent that um, email out to every publication, every publication responded, right? But just because I have these relationships doesn't mean that if you're M. So Schmo from up the block that I'm going to reach out to them and they're going to fuck with you, right? So, oh, like, like, so, so, so like when, when, I'm like, when I'm like referring people to publicists, like my guy, Quinnell Holder, Coach Q, I always mention his name. Even people like Sasha Pisterman, I mention her name as well. These are people, whenever people ask for publicists, I always recommend them because I know for a fact that I've watched them take an artist that nobody knows mm -hmm. and work them and put them in the conversation. That's who you need to hire, like for anything, PR, just a, a, a marketing specialist, a consultant, whatever. Someone who, who you can see a case study of when they've taken an artist that nobody knows mm -hmm. and put them up here. Because like when you see these people that are already, already working with established artists, that's not really showing me nothing. Nope. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like everybody, that doesn't tell me that you, you have the leverage, the pull. That those those clients, their name um, is, is your pull. Yep, 100%. 100%. You know? And the sad thing is a lot of these uh, people, they'll work for these big clients, but then these um, up and coming artists will see them and be like, oh yeah, let me hire you. And then they'll just take the money and just do nothing. Hey man, it happens every day. <laughs> so sometimes I wonder why. It's like, man, you got so many big clients. Why are you why are you why are you taking these these dudes shit, man? But um, but yeah, that I mean that that's a huge point, man. Because especially the way the industry set up, when we talk about even bigger artists, you can come in, let's just say you go to college, do an internship at Atlantic or just insert whatever label work for those labels because you're at that label you're going to be doing something on said artist project right some kind of big name artist project and it might not even be big whatever you know yeah. but you did something to the point where you can kind of put them in your portfolio but it doesn't it doesn't really add up to like you said the pool to actually be able to move the needle and, and that's and, a whole and, and, story. And, 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 it's a cash 22 also because even for me like, I didn't put my website up until, like, I think last July or last June. I, I, I finally really put my website together and showed a lot of the work that I've done. Prior to that, all my clientele, all of it came through word of mouth and referrals. Mm -hmm. Right? And, um, and I realized that a lot of people who didn't know me, who had maybe heard about me, like, I'm talking about your local rapper or your local rapper manager talking to me like, well, I don't know who you are, so you got to prove yourself. I'm like, nah, right? <laughs> but but then, you're basically trying, to, basically trying to finesse. But then when, I, but then I also see the, the, the um, purpose of showing your portfolio and showing uh -huh. I did this, I did this, because then it kind of like makes people respect your, respect your resume, you know what I mean? Like talk to you, nah. you hear me? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that, like you said, it's the catch 22. You executing the people who need to know will know, and you have plenty of word of mouth business. And then, yeah, it is that situation, especially when you're dealing with. I mean, sometimes, honestly, it, it'd be somebody you like. You don't even want to do work for. You like me, prove myself to you. Like, bro, I'm straight. What do you? What do you mean, prove myself bro. to you? <laughs> after after I got my money up, because I like I had been saving my money, been smart mm -hmm. with me, bro. Like for the past like few several years, if I see it's going to be a stressful situation. Nope. I don't care how talented. This, like, and there's been times where I, I take the money and then start working and I see red flags popping up, like not following directions or not being lazy or just the whole nine. I send out, I don't even tell them I'm refunding them. I just refund them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had to do that a couple of times. Yeah. People, so I mean, all right. So this is a perfect segue, though, into like what do artists do wrong? Because I, I, I think so many artists are afraid of getting scammed, right? Which there's plenty of people scamming out there. They don't understand, like they can't even identify when they're dealing with somebody who's actually real and actually doing the stuff, and they don't know that those that baggage, almost like a you know boyfriend girlfriend relationship, that baggage you bring in from that stuff to the right people. Like it's like they're not for it, it. bruh. <laughs> yeah, they they're trying to get rid of you. They they're like, nah. I'd rather give you your money back. I don't want that headache. Like I I'm, I'm not trying to scam you. I don't want to because you know if if you're out here scamming people and you're trying to do it the right way, you're you're only gonna ruin your name anyway. That's a short lived game. So t tell me what artists, yeah, what artists do wrong. What 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 can as a matter of fact, we'll start here. Like what can get them fired by by you? Um, the quickest thing is just kind of like not understanding boundaries. Like in terms of um, you're blowing up my phone all day long about random stuff, uh, like expecting me to be to drop everything I'm doing to tend to your, your BS at, at all points in the day. Or like um, someone, like you said, that baggage from a, being afraid of getting scammed. So now it's just kind of like every little thing is like 
overanalyzed and over. And it's almost as if they're looking to find something that's wrong, right? <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then it's just kind of like when they don't understand something, they start to pick like, and it's just kind of like, like um, I had um, a client um, sign up for um, uh, a, a, a distribution service just to kind of help them, right? And then like there was something that they didn't understand. And then I guess they thought that I had steered them in the wrong direction and they started panicking, right? And just like, call, please call now, call now. It's like, and it's just kind of like, bro, just read the thing. Like, you just misread it, please. Like, I can't keep doing this every time. Like, you know what I mean? But the, but the most important thing that really, like, makes me not deal with artists is people who just don't follow directions. Because as someone who does marketing and represents clients, like, I have my job. But yeah. you have things you have to do as well to make mm-hmm. this work, right? Yeah. So I'm very clear on what you should expect of me and what I expect of you. So if you say you understand, and these are things that I write out, like I, I give to them. So it's like you can't, because there's a lot of people, and you know, there's people like you can't just talk to them on the phone. Like you got to like make sure you send that email or that text message. So it's in black and white. So you can't say that I didn't tell you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just kind of like you, you let them know what, what's expected of them and they just don't follow directions. And because they don't follow, follow up on there and things are not working as good as they could. Mm-hmm. And then guess who they start to blame? Yeah. So now, because the old me, because like when I needed the money, I would keep working. But now that I don't need the money, it's just kind of like if I already see you're not following directions, this whole thing is not going to work. So. Who cares? Like, um, here's your here's your money back. Uh, on, on to the next. Yeah, it's like um, you don't have time and, for it. It's not worth it. And it's like, and it's like, um, the artists, the clients that I've worked with or collaborated with people on certain projects, where the people follow directions, it works perfectly, perfectly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So why is it? So, because. I, and I didn't even know that when I first really got into it, and t- I actually had to have a client that was doing, doing work, like really putting in in concert with what I was doing. That was my when it first clicked. It's like, oh shit, this is the difference. This person is, <laughs> you know, is doing it. it, it like, <laughs> yeah, it, it takes it takes a whole perspective, and that, then you start looking like I need more people like this. Cause then what I do is really going to accelerate it and it's all going to work versus somebody else is like, you just beating on a dead horse. Uh, what, what is, um, like when it, when it comes to, I mean, how artists should approach marketing right now, let's say if they can't work with any kind of like marketer, like anybody who's an expert per se or whatever, Right, like if they just have to try to figure it out themselves, what would you tell them to do today? Well, the first thing I would tell them is to take take a. You can still keep recording your music, mm-hmm. but before you decide to put your music out, go on the internet and learn. Do your due diligence. Learn about how things work. Mm-hmm. Like learn about um, licenses and copyrights and Things like that, like like there's people who come to me to do work, and they don't even have their paperwork together. So it's like if this shit does take off, you can't even make money off of it, right? Yeah. So there's that. But yeah. then also, like one of the ways when we were coming up with Vellus, one of the ways that I did was I would like look at like Source or XXL Magazine or MTV Gems or whatever, and I would see someone up there and like how'd they get up here like someone who's like maybe i'm like i'm just finding out about them i'm like how'd they get up here then i'll go work backwards and find out okay who did they work with what did they do like the people who are where you want to be find out what they did to get there that's that doesn't mean you have to copy it step for step but just knowing what is available to you is going to help you right Like, um, one of the best sayings ever in life is if you keep doing something and it's not working and you keep doing it, that's the definition of insanity, right? Uh And it's just kind of like, 
there's people, I'm sure you know, just people you grew up with that have been making music for 10, 15 years and they're still local. It's not that they, they make bad music. It's just that they haven't changed their approach at all, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like nowadays there's different ways for an artist to break. The best way for an artist to break right now, um, and I tell this to every client, even if it's not a client, I tell them is consistency, providing content. Yeah. Um, and, not, and when I say content, I don't mean just your song. If you are an artist in 2020 and you're releasing music on the internet and you don't have a music video, your song doesn't exist. Mm. Nobody's going to be checking for it. And at that point, you're really just hoping to get lucky. That's, essentially, that's what you're doing. So it's like, if you sit back for a whole year and you, play, you learn the game, and you put together a strategy. It might not be the best strategy, but you, you put together some sort of strategy and you save up, you stack up your money. By the time you are ready to drop your music, you're gonna be um, in far better shape to have success than if you just record your music and you just start it out sporadically. You know what I mean? One year of hard research and learning, six months of that could save you a lot of time wasted and a lot, save you a lot of money. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I think preparation is, is definitely underrated and this whole, just get out there. It's cool. You can build stuff and you can test and experiment, but making sure you put more time into your preparation, making more create creative in your video, you know, whatever that is, just spending time on the front end can definitely save you back in um, headaches. So, mm -hmm. all right, outside of, of that then, if I'm, all right, I'm going to prepare, I'm going to really get myself in the right mindset, understand the game a lot more, and definitely that reverse engineer from where artists are, who they work with is, is a huge gem. I hope that doesn't go over people's head. You definitely um, need to do that. What is... um. What are some of the most interesting platforms popping right now to you in terms of marketing for artists? I think um, it's not necessarily um, the platforms, it's how you use it. Okay. Right? So it's just kind of like, people are talking about TikTok right now, mm -hmm. right? And it's just kind of like, going back to our point about just throwing shit out there sporadically, there's people who are popping off TikTok right now. Roddy Rich is someone whose song just blew up off that platform. Yep. Now, um, just because that happened for him doesn't mean that now you should just take whatever money you have and just start throwing it at influencers, just hoping that the same shit happens for you. Uh -huh. okay. that's, not how that, that's not how that really works. Yep. Like, you should... Um, whether it's Instagram influencers, TikTok influencers, yo, make sure that the people that you're reaching out to, their audience makes sense for your music, right? Make sure that, make sure that at least there's a connection there. Yeah. And then also learn the platform. Like if once you learn Instagram, you're going to be able to know, okay, who's, who's got fake followers? Who's got fake likes? Who's, who's faking it? Who, or who has low engagement? Like where you shouldn't be spending your money. Like, you know what I mean? Just because it's, just because it's a platform doesn't mean you should be spending your money there. You get what I'm saying? Right. So it's also like a combination of things. Like I always say like people come in and they're like, there's some clients that I have reoccur, And it's just like, you tell them, but hey, you want to keep spending money? Fine. They come in and they're like, yeah, you know, I want to um, do put some, uh, some Spotify on my shit and then do some playlisting. The numbers go up and then a few months later they come back. Yeah, I'm going to put some little bit more Spotify on my shit. Put it on. <laughs> it's kind of like, bro, what about if you just, that money that you're spending on that Spotify and you're boosting your streams, what about if you just save up your money and then talk to me and let's figure it out or just figure it out on your own about like, okay, I'm going to put X amount on Spotify. I'm going to put X amount on with these Instagram influencers, these TikTok influencers. I'm going to run advertising here. You know what I mean? And then that's when you're really going to see a change in your, in your, in your trajectory. But exactly. as far as, but as far as the most, the platform that's, I feel like the most effective is definitely the advertising. 
Yes, sir. It's it's so underrated, and I always have to like explain to people like the importance of it and how effective it is. It's 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 a matter of it's there. Everyone could do it, but it's who's doing it. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. Yep. It's, it's I, I, like I remember like I was talking to a client. It's just like yeah yeah, yeah I'm not gonna go through y'all no more. I figured out that form. I figured out y'all formula. I was like word. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I love it. I love when that happens, bro. <laughs> it, it's just uh, like it's a difference between hiring people who know what they're doing and people who don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That I mean, I mean, that just makes me think. <laughs> it's direct to consumer. It's taking away the gatekeepers. Yeah, it's taking away all the middleman riffraff and all that stuff. It's it because uh, essentially a lot of what's happening in marketing is product placement. Mm. It's I put my product, my song here, and hopefully enough people hear it. And out of the people who hear it, hopefully they like it. Yep. That that's that's the basic concept for radio, for TV, for blogs, for playlists, for so much, so many different aspects in the but advertising when done correctly it goes directly to the type of people who like the type of content that you're creating. Like there's so many sub genres of hip hop. A lot of genres of music. It's just kind of like J Cole fans and Comethazine fans are not the same people. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this is kind of like who, who's your audience and find them and you go right to them and they decide whether or not your shit is popping or not. And that's why I like like working with gens and like working with working um artist campaigns and where we're doing some advertising, we're doing some Spotify playlisting, we're we're putting together this campaign, they're following directions. And then within yeah. like two, three, within two, three months, they're out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely a huge difference. And it's always funny when artists think they have something figured out and they they don't understand, even if you say, hey, I'm doing, a, you do a Spotify campaign or you are doing advertising. It's like, yes, understanding that this is happening doesn't mean you know how to do it <laughs> and execute it and, and understand the nuances. And it's always like, hey, you know, you know, best of luck to you. But yeah, it's funny how many artists are do that. You can hear, I, can, I've, I even had conversations with certain artists and I'm, I can tell that they're trying to hear it to figure out how not mm-hmm. to need me. <laughs> it's like, eh, I mean, that's cool. Go ahead and try. And then you see that the numbers don't go up anymore. And it just is what it is. <laughs> so my favorite, my favorite thing is when um, people come to me and they're like, they see my prices because that's part of the thing in life. You got to realize your value and, and put a price tag on that shit. Uh-huh. Like you can not give your shit away just yep. for, and th- that's another story for another day. Cause I've worked, a lot of shit for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got you. you. know what I mean? And got and got nothing out of it on the of like, yo, when we on, it's gonna. Yeah. They got. 100%. They, you know what I'm <laughs> but um, but I'm like, it, it's 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 just like when you um, when when you're talking to these people and they're like, well, such and such could do it for this price for me, or this this that, and then I right, go ahead, go to them. And then when they come back after they've been scammed or it didn't work and it's like, yo, can you work with me on a discount? Because, you know, I went with, it's like, that's not my problem, sir. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. You don't waste a half your budget already. Oh, well. Yeah. 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 I I mean, understanding how to analyze and figure out the right people is is definitely a, to be a skill in and of itself. Well, if there's something that you can, leave mm, i'll say artists no 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 i say somebody who wants to be like you if there's something you can leave people who want to do what you do or like or even just be professional in the industry and succeed like what what's that gym that you would leave them with that you learned um i would say definitely bring value everywhere you go mm. and also in this cutthroat business, never put yourself in a position where your future is in someone else's hands. Mm. Um, Because if you have value, if things fall apart, 
like they've like that which has happened to me in the past where i've had to basically start over or start from scratch or or you know lost out on certain situations i would be out of the business and i know a lot of people like that who things fell apart and then you they just they just left the business altogether but because i've expanded my skill set i've learned different things i'm constantly learning i'm constantly trying to improve on the things that i already know and trying to find the next wave or trying to find like you know what i mean always adding value like the, the true measure of someone i always say is if they leave a situation and the situation falls apart that's when you know yep, <laughs> yep. Now, you get what i'm saying all day all day well, hey man, that's that's dope, and that 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 last part is something that people can definitely pay attention to. Watch who moves situations, and there's constantly success wherever they are. You'll start to find out it's not necessarily all the, always the people who are saying it's them or. That's not always fashion. the people that are taking the pictures that are like you know at every event or whatever. Yeah, these are people who are branding themselves very well. Yes, but that sir. doesn't mean they can do the work for you. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So um, with that, man, hey, again, it's Rocco with Thon. You can follow him on IG at Round Face Rocco. Anywhere else you want him to follow you or check you out? Um, Round Face Rocco on IG, Twitter, and my website, RoccoRathon.com. That's what's up, man. All that information, of course, will be below on the screen. All that good stuff. It's yet again, another link up. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. It's the network.